What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-hosts, my partners in crime, Brock Davis and Nate Green. Fellas, coming off a big, big first series win. We're going to be excited about that, right, Nate? Yes, big Nate, first series win. Nate, I got a question. Are we working on negative Nate merch yet? Is that is that in the works? I had. I'm I'm down. I'm so, down. Brock, we had. I don't know. You don't know if you read the comments. I go through. I for all you guys, I read all the comments. By the way, I might not comment back. We read all the comments on YouTube. We had a request to get some negative Nate merch going, Brock. So let's get the wheels going on some negative Nate if, merch. If that guy has anything to like, please email it to us at Talking Halos. We might, we might start please, thinking like, about doing. We just something. want to see what like the ideas are, and you know, maybe, maybe might. we take one. Maybe we take one around with is, her, or maybe we we take the idea and change it up a little bit and make it our own. But yeah, talk, if you got something, send it in. Talking Halos merch has always been in the thoughts and plans along with the website, which we have the website talking halos.com shout out to anybody, all the guys that are writing on there, um, you know, and, and sh- shout out to the, to the website and everything like that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, we'll, we're working on merch. We're working on some merch. It's nothing crazy. I don't want to get too out of hand. I mean, it's talking halos. It's cool. Like we do this for fun. If, if something big comes about it, if something cool comes about it like this, then, then we'll keep it going. But like I said, I like the humble, I, I like talking baseball. Let's, Let's get to it. None of that. No more of that stuff. Um, with that being said, big angels, big, I would call it kind of a big, they, I think they should have swept, but uh, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about that. We're you think I, I, you couldn't name five A's before game one. What do you mean? You think <laughs> All right, you let's talk about think. let's, let's die. Let's dive into it. Tough first game for the angels. Tough opening day. Everybody panicked after game one on social media. Nobody wanted it. We can jump right into it. The offense wasn't fantastic. Shohei Otani pitched fantastic. You got uh, Jimmy Herget pitches a, a solid seventh inning. You get to the eighth inning. Wheels fell off. Nate might have been right. Aaron Loop trying to get those last nine outs. We talked about it. Nate, I don't want to talk to you about it because everybody's everybody already knows you're right. We posted it all over Twitter. We posted it all over social media that you were right. We don't want to hear it about happens it. once in a while. Brock, did you watch opening day? Yeah, I've watched all three. What was your thought? Who who would you have brought in? Aaron Loop or would it should it have been another lefty or should it have been somebody else? I mean, I feel like on opening day, it's so hard to really know, right? Especially for us, right? Like you're going to be, Nevin is going to be going off of what he saw in spring training, the matchup. He's going off of stuff that he's seeing that we're not necessarily seeing on a day-to-day basis until the season's already, you know, a week or two in, then we're going to be like, Hey, loop was rough. Right. And he's going to be coming out for redemption. So I don't know if it was necessarily a wrong choice of who to bring in. I think it was, you know, I, I, I didn't see the interview. I think it was the post game interview, but I guess loop was very accountable. He knew where he messed up. Right. And hopefully it was a, I don't even know the word, like a once occurrence type thing. I still feel somewhat confident in loop, even though Nate, I know is not a big fan, but I think loop has flashes of goodness. I don't want to say greatness, but I, th- I don't, I don't think, I don't think Nevin made a mistake. I think at the end of the day, I think all of us would say you should have scored more than one run, right? Like we're facing the A's. We should have swept not only because of the roster, like Nate said, but the fact that that game should have been a win based off of how that eighth went, but you got to score more than one run, dude, you got to have some type of run support for guys that come out and make mistakes on the mound. Like loop did right. Two runs shouldn't lose you the game. Two runs should not lose you the game. No. So I I hear you, but how many runs are scored in the postseason? They're all close games. Like you're, you're not blowing teams out in the postseason. We're not right. talking about the postseason. Hey, hey, We're talking about hey. day one. Day one. Let, let me finish, though. If you can't win one, one, two, nothing games here, how do you expect to win one, two run games in the postseason? Right? Yeah. We want to make the wrong. postseason. We want to win postseason games. We don't want to go back to the postseason and get swept. We want to win postseason games. The only way to win postseason games is to win close games. And if you can't win close games now, how do you expect to win close games later? So I, I know the offense sucked. I, I'm not discrediting that, but you're. Paying the dude nine million dollars, he should be able to get three outs against three guys, and two of them have never played in the major leagues. 
Which, oh. given the not played in the major leagues thing, all three of us know how the A's roll, right? They bring out these no name people somehow, and they end up. Yeah. I mean, dude, especially A's they did versus pinch Angels. Hit Rooker, but oh my <laughs> god, like it, it's the A's are so frustrating, exactly for that reason. You're like, never heard of this guy. Comes up, hits a three run jack against the Angels in the bottom of the eighth. We lose the game. Not many other teams, in, or if any, are like that, where you don't know who these guys are and they're putting a hurt on us. Like, Loriano is the only person consistently over the last few years on the A's that's really killed us. And he even, what did he hit? Didn't he hit a solo bomb on uh, the second game? Might have been a, might have been a doesn't matter solo bomb. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, was I think it was. But still, like, Loriano has always played well against us. But, yeah, the A's, the A's piss me off. They always have, just because they're – they're like they're just pests like guys you never know and they just come up and they're annoying but no i agree close games you got to win them but hopefully this is it's a very very small sample size and we'll get a better gist of what we got going on a couple months in on close games here's here's where i stand on aaron loop and it's going to continue to stand on that and i, I think that they made the wrong decision and not phil nevin not it, the angels front office i don't i, I don't Okay, I, I don't. I don't Everyone know how the Angels play. All three how, get blamed. I don't know how the Angels play it. Bill Nevin makes the call. Is it the Angels front office that makes the call? Whoever it is that made the call to bring in Aaron Loop, I I don't agree with it. I'm not going to ever agree with bringing him in 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 anything later in anything between the eighth and ninth inning. I think seventh inning that's fine. Whatever. I, I don't. That's you fine. think he's it's more good. middle middle borderline setup type. And also with that eighth ninth in a save opportunity, close game, high situation, high leverage. I don't think that that is where Aaron loop thrives. And we've said this a lot. We've said, put guys in correct situations. And besides putting Aaron loop in that situation, I thought everybody else was put in good situations. Like I trust Jimmy Hergen in that seventh inning spot when in a one run lead, like, I don't think that's a bad spot to put him in. I don't would prefer not to see him constantly in that spot. And I think on, in a good bullpen, he's not in that spot, but I also think that he's earned, at least the opportunity for that spot with the way he pitched last season. I, I think that, you know, I, I don't think he has the stuff to do it, but I do think he's earned the opportunity to at least pitch in a seventh inning. Like, I don't think he is a, on a good team in a good bullpen, a high leverage guy. Seventh inning. Sure. You know, I don't want to see him in the eighth or ninth inning or anything like that. Aaron loop. Same thing. He has not, he hasn't beside back it up a little bit. Not Aaron loop has not earned that that what Jimmy Herget has for me. Aaron Loop is not a high leverage guy. He never really has been a high leverage guy. Like even when you look at the Mets, he was never a high leverage guy. He wasn't put in that eighth, ninth inning. He wasn't a closer. Um and and for those you know who have played and like myself, I was never a guy that liked getting the last three outs of the game unless I started the game. Um I, it's a different it's a different beast. It really is getting those last three outs. I was not a I didn't like I just I, it's not that I didn't have that closer mentality and Nate you know you know you know this too you weren't a closer I like to start more like I didn't I didn't they didn't have that reliever mentality that closer mentality like I was a starter I knew my I knew my role and that's that's where I that's where I stood I mean I could get the last three outs but I knew it might be a little little bit dicey um and that's just it's a it's a mentality thing I just don't think that Aaron Loop has that mentality Ryan Tapera I think Ryan Tapera has been there and done it before where he can pitch in the eighth or ninth inning seventh eighth or ninth inning you know and I think that I think that at some point he may deserve it, but right now I don't think he has deserved it looking at last year. Like you need to earn that this off season or this season. Same thing with Aaron Loop. Like Aaron Loop needs to earn that. You know, like Matt Moore last year was a was put in high leverage situations. That's who I would have put in. Um, or hell, even Jose Kiata, who I know gave up the runs to USA and everything like that. But Jose Kiata pitching in high leverage situations, it can handle that. You know, like he, he's been there, he's done that before. He's done it this 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 season already. Um, in high leverage situations in the world baseball classic like i said though he did give up the runs blah blah blah. but he's been there he's done that um usa is a lot different than the a's but y- yes yes yeah exactly but i mean end of the game one nothing game it's still high leverage you still need to get outs there aaron loop is not the guy i would have put in there that's one of the only mistakes besides the offense that i think was made this series i don't think we need to harp on that a loss is a loss it's not a good loss yes the offense probably should have hit more like they did in games two and game three um other than that, a lot of good, a lot of a lot of positive takeaway from that game. I thought, you know, I thought they thought they played a decent game. It, it it is what it is. A loss is a loss. You have to beat bad teams. That's the key to winning this season: beating bad teams. 
And they they did that on in game two and game three. I think that that was that was good. Positives to take away from this series, games two and games three after that. Very, very good pitching. The Angels outscored the A's this entire series 20 to 3. You would think they would have earned a sweep, a sweep, but they did not. Um, so that is a big plus. The big 11 run inning helped that out for sure. Um, question here for you guys, and I'm just kind of thinking about this now, and probably the last question before we we dive into the Anthony Rendon thing, because uh-huh. I don't think we need to get into the series too much. I think there's not a lot to take away from it. I think, I mean, there are positives to definitely take away from it, but it is the age and you have to beat bad teams. Are you worried about the offense being hit or miss? You scored half of your runs in this series in one inning. Nate, I'll kind of start with you. Is Are you worried about that? I'm not really worried about them being hit or miss. I think they're going to score runs. Um, they're going to struggle against tough pitching. I think most offenses do struggle against the really good pitching. Uh, not that not that the guy who started on Friday was a tough pitcher. But I think you're looking at, you know, first game of the year, first game that counts, a little bit of nerves, a little bit of everything. And it's a, it's a little bit different of a situation than these spring training games, even against the Dodgers, where it's like, oh, we're basically here. No, it's still different. So um, I think the Angels are going to be fine. They're going to score runs. Um the the one thing that worries me about the offense is they do have some streaky guys. And that's the one thing is like, can can they not go cold at the same time? But I don't it's gonna be really hard for all of them to go cold at the same time. So I think they're they're gonna score runs. They're probably gonna score five, six runs a game. And if you're scoring five, six runs a game, you should be winning baseball games. So Brock. We'll see if they can pitch though. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about the offense at all. I think I definitely, I've been loving what I've been seeing from Ohapi so far. I think we all have. Um, I think I just need to see more from Rendon, Renfro, Drury specifically. Like Renhifo hasn't even got a hit, I don't think, but he's been on base like crazy. Herschel has been getting hits. Taylor Ward's been been hitting really well. Trout Otani, obviously. Um, and speaking of, dude, those shots, those back-to-back shots today, those were piss missiles dude oh my god like the feeling i had inside of my body when that happened that back-to-back happened i was like oh god they're doing it to me again dude they're doing it to me again right but i definitely obviously uh rendon hopefully uh wayne randazzo said at the beginning of the game today that rendon it was just an off day and his knee's fine so we'll see We'll see. I don't know how much Wayne actually knows about the inner workings of what's going on yet. Him is a brand new person, but I'm sure he's, you know, he's getting Gooby knows a lot about what's going on most of the time. So hopefully Rendon is back and I need, we all need to see him show up again, like he did in 2020 in that Mickey Mouse season. We need him to show up again because him in that four or five hole behind that is so much added protection. And that's going to make such a big difference if he could come back and be who he's supposed to be. And then have Renfro behind him. And, you know, that's kind of the streakiness part that Nate's talking about, right? If you're having Ward, Trout, Otani, uh, Rendon, Renfro, that one through five is disgusting. But if everyone's cold somehow, like, you know, the six through nine isn't going to be that impactful. Like, Ohapi looks really good so far. And hopefully this isn't just a streak and a, you know, rookie luck. But um, we've all been very hopeful for for Ohapi from the beginning. Um, so I'm not worried. I just want those specific three, especially since Drury came in, you know, everybody off of a career year. So uh, Drury is going to be – a lot of people are going to be skeptical of him. So hopefully he can come back and be somewhat like he was last year, even if we got 75% of that. But we'll see. I'm looking in the background of your uh... – your screen. Do you ride the bike? No, that's my wife's. All right. Just want to make sure. I saw some. Yeah. Saw some yeah, the, dust back there. Yeah, the Peloton. Hell no, dude. I can't. No, <laughs> I got. I got a mountain bike, dude. I don't ride the Peloton. Are uh, you talking about the 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 cow looking thing? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, I think it's like a resistance band for okay. like squat. I don't <laughs> even got, know what she uses. It for. It's it, a resistance it, it band. Me. You know, girls me. girls will know. They use them. It, I, caught, I don't know. it caught my eye mid. You were talking. I was like, what do you got going on back there? All right. Hey, I the know. And it's thick so, with two C's. So side note there, side note. I apologize. Um. Okay. With that being said, we already mentioned Rendon. We have to talk about it. I think I don't want to say anything wrong here. I think that the media is making a big deal about something that they should be but I think they're blowing it a bit out of proportion, 100%. 
So and media I, does. Yes. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. All media. However, I will be truthful about I will be truthful about this one. Um, that what I'm going to say here is that I think that the Angels have some pieces of being the bad boys of baseball. And Nate, I know you're not going to like that because we've talked about it in the past, but I do think the Angels have some pieces of being the bad boys of baseball. And some of these, you know, things that they have done, you know, to start in the brawl, which obviously didn't help last year, Bill Nevin, who is the leader in the clubhouse. And we know that he has a, uh, a feisty attitude when it comes That's to a things. fiery personality, a fiery personality that works as well. That's another good uh, way to describe him. A very fiery personality. And this is something that I've wanted in the organization for quite some time. And I wasn't sure how they were going to do that. We started seeing it down in the minors at the end of the day, though, for the, any team to be the bad boys, you know, the old Pistons, per se, the 90s Pistons, for all those older watchers, viewers here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, That's your first one? You're not going to go to the no. Phillies, the Nasty no. Boys? No, oh well, you can go to the Phillies and Nasty Boys. I went to the Pistons. I, li- I like or that. The E60. Reds, Nasty Boys, excuse me. I, I like that E60 that they do. Um, Reds, Nasty Boys, excuse that's, me. That's fine. Um, I like I like the E60 that they do with the Pistons and the and the Pacers and and all that and the Knicks Is it the Knicks Pistons no it's Pistons, um wow no it wasn't it was the the Pistons the same thing the Knicks is what who, I, who I'm thinking about too but besides the point besides the point I, I at the end of the day those teams they win right you can't be the bad boys you can't be the villain you can't you know you can't play the villain unless you're winning ball, unless you're winning games. The Angels haven't done that in the past, so you can't you can't call yourself the villain, you can't call yourself the bad boys yet. But I do like this type of fiery nasty mentality. Like that's just kind of the way like throw behind guys, that old school approach that I know a lot of people aren't going to like what I'm saying here and I know that, you know, players shouldn't be gra- running into this running into the stands. Players shouldn't be jumping into the stands and grabbing people by any means and Rendon Hundred percent's in the wrong. He's gonna probably get fined. I don't know if he gets suspended. Second time offender. All that fun stuff. Um, yes, Nate. I know. Um, I, I, I don't care. I'm gonna be honest here with you. Like stupid media making big deals about it. I we weren't gonna talk about it, but I'm gonna be honest here with you. Screw that LA Times article. That was an absolute bullshit article. Sorry, I have to say it. And then I hope you know if I get in trouble, that is what it is. All right, but we got to move on from him. Horrible, horrible <laughs> article there. Guys, I want some thoughts on, on the Anthony Rendon thing before I continue to get myself in more and more trouble here because I'm <laughs> going to start just getting more and more mad after what everybody had to say. We, we know. That article was idiotic and stupid. And go ahead, take it away before I lose my mind. Yeah, right, please I don't, be quiet. I, Stop it. I don't have much to say about it. All I'll say is I kind of – like we we're going with the fire personality that we've missed, right? Like Jared Weaver esque, John Lackey esque type mentality, where it's that old school fire bulldog type attitude. We've missed that for a long time. I think Phil Nevin kind of brought that back into the clubhouse because Joe Madden didn't really seem that kind of vibe at all. He's a player's but, manager. He's a player's manager there. Yes, hundred percent. So I think I'm also trying to pick my words strategically here. It's not that I don't care, but I think where I am is like working in the medical field as, as a paramedic, which I don't even know if any listeners even know that I've, I've done that, but I was a paramedic for a while, EMT before that. I've been on scene of, of EMS calls where I have family members and the patients themselves or whoever may be on scene, friends, you know, whatever, saying horrible things to me as I'm trying to you know, handle my business, right? Because they don't understand my business and they've never been in my shoes and they think that something's way more of an emergency than it may actually be, right? And they're sitting there talking shit for lack of a better term, calling me names, calling me racist names, racist names that aren't even my race, like just random things, right? But at the end of the day, two things, I have a job to do when I'm there. And number two is that no matter what, no matter what they say to me, no matter what, I have to remain professional. I have to keep my professionalism. Now, am I going to go back in the rig and talk shit when I'm done because I'm pissed off? 100%, right? So 
at the end of the day, I honestly wouldn't have been against Rendon talking shit back. I wouldn't. I would have, I think that line was crossed once he grabbed shirt. And the only reason I say that is because I slap. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, I'm saying once he reached that yeah, point, I, it was I like know. everything he, past that was going to be. Once he made contact with him. Yeah, man, like 100%. Every... Like, it's not the same. And we, us three know it's not the same as talking shit to the opposing dugout and laying hands on the other team because it's it's part of the game almost, right? Like, if a hockey player is getting fights, it's part of the game. But if a hockey player goes out in the stands and beats the crap out of a fan, totally different thing. They're not part of the game. They might be talking shit, but they're not in that inner ring. They're not in the game. They shouldn't be in the game. So where does somebody somebody cross the line then? Because we've seen fans throw stuff onto the field. Oh, 100%. Like, is that when, like, all of a sudden, like, if somebody gets hit, like. Yes. For me, and and that's me as a man and, like, me as a professional. I'm thinking it as a, a professional standpoint of almost like a defend yourself type thing right like i would never lay my hands on anybody in a professional atmosphere but once i feel like i have to defend myself then i have to do what i have to do right so but at the end of the day like they're playing baseball dude like they're not on scene of a violent ems call like i'm talking about it's totally different right but if someone throws a beer at you and they come up to you and they're initiating and you know you're just saying stuff and and something happens then I think it's a little bit different, but I think words, I think words are hitting Rendon a little bit harder because he knows he's been struggling. He knows that he's kind of iffy with the fan base. He has a lot more pressure than a normal baseball player does right now, a successful baseball player. And I think he just let the words get to him. And I like the fieriness. I just think maybe he could have went about it a little bit different. Um, I would say, I think it's a good thing. He probably missed the slap and that it didn't escalate any further. Cause we don't know what would have happened if he made contact actually could have gotten a lot worse. Uh, but one thing I did notice, which I don't know if who noticed, but Hunter Renfro was standing right next to him. Kind of like, almost like that. Hey, I'm about to, I'm about to throw down If you're about to throw down kind of look, and that kind of made me happy in that atmosphere of what you're talking about of like, Hey, Renfro is brand new to this team and he's ready to back up his boys, right? Like this fan's talking trash, Rendon's pissed, and he's just standing there like, all right, I'm not going to do anything yet, but if this fan tries to do something to Tony right now, there's going to be an issue. And I was like, cool. I kind of like that part, you know, because it's like, they're your boys, dude. You got to be there for your boys. And Trout and Otani just walked by, but they're too important to engage in something like that, in my opinion. They can't. Like they they can't even say nothing, dude. They can't. I, I... Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. I do. And there's professionalism to it. I, I totally agree with that. Like I said, I, I think that Rendon crossed the line. I, I do. I don't think that should have ever happened. Nothing like that. But I don't know what he said either, to be honest. Like, but like they're also sports, they're, professional sports players. They're not like in the medical field. They're not like, uh, like, Rindo. I can't even think of another. Like, do they really need to be professional though? Like at the end they, of the day, do they really they had need to, to be? They had to have said, somebody had to have said something for, to get, anybody to react like that you know i mean not just call somebody what they said they called him i had to have been something different so nate before we let everybody go go ahead and give us thoughts on the anthony rendon thing as easily as you possibly can there mr negative Nate. <laughs> um so a couple things first off what he did was totally unacceptable uh we're not going to condone what he did obviously um not on that train but Oakland needs to do something about this. This is part of Oakland's fault. Uh, I am on Scott Boris's side for the first time in my entire life. I I don't know how, uh, but he said something intelligent for like the first time ever. What did he um, say? Scott Boris said that this is the only place in Major League Baseball where fans have access to players. Like, and, uh, and it's yeah. 100% true. And wh- why is that? I don't know. Oakland needs a new stadium. They need to do a lot of things. I, I am in agreement with Scott Boris there. Um. Anthony Rendon, again, should not do what he did. The thing that pisses me off the most about this is you guys are talking about the nasty boys and this and that, what, whatever. But they're not the nasty boys on the field. Like, it would be different if they were no, that team. Rendon started a fight last year. Rendon didn't start a fight. The Mariners He's talking about dirty fight. play. He's talking the about The Mariners dirty started play. the like fight, Machado. let's be honest, right? Like, the Mariners did it, right? You're talking about the bad boys. First guy, right, you – it's like, oh, if the bad boys did this, yeah, of course, like this is normal. Uh, when Ron Artest went into the to the 
stands and, and did his thing, everyone was pissed, right? But they're like, you know what? That's Ron Artest. That's what he does. Or whatever he's calling himself. Now, Meta World Peace, if he's back to Ron Artest, I apologize. Um, right? I don't think so, he listens. <laughs> I, I know, but just in case. Um, so, so this is the problem I have with the Angels trying to be the bad boys, but they're not that way on the field. And it's like, it would be different if they were that team that was like fiery on the field. You you saw some emotion from them. Anthony Rendon plays with no emotion. Like he hits a double. It's like, woohoo, cool. Mike Trout hits a homer. It's like, okay. You know, like these guys aren't playing with the emotion that, that you see, like, especially when you're watching the World Baseball Classic, you're seeing a different type of emotion, obviously, because it's for their country and things like that. But the Angels aren't even close to that kind of emotion. So I think the most emotion we saw all weekend is when Renfro cut the ball behind his back on accident on one of the worst reads I've ever seen. It was a nice play, but like it was not a good read. Um, so why is that? You know, like we want to be the bad boys, you know, when it doesn't matter. Like that's the story of the Angels franchise. Like let's let's care when nobody cares. So I I am a little upset about that obviously i'm upset with what rendon with what rendon did but it's just a total total loss on everything because it's like either completely um take over the identity of being the nasty boys the bad boys whatever you want to call and be that manny machado be that um ron artest metal world peace type of player draymond green all these guys that you could name right uh, be that type of guy all the time or none of the time. Like, don't just pick and choose when you're going to be that guy. Be it all the time. So, I, I don't know. I, I I think it's it's pretty bad. I think it just shows how frustrated this Angel team is after losing a close one. And it just shows um, that they are taking the identity of the manager. And I don't know if the manager necessarily – has them going in the right direction. I know we we everyone wants to be like, hey, they they won games with Nevin last year. It's like, okay, you won games when nobody cared because you weren't you weren't playing for anything. So if they can get on the right track with this energy and emotion um, pointed in the right direction, sure, fine. Like I'm fine with them doing this, but it, it just seems like, and this is the analogy I love using. It, it feels like they're the bully in this situation. And not a fighter. And and I want I want guys who are going to fight. You know, I don't want guys that are going to be the bully. The bully is the guy who picks on the little guys, doesn't do anything. And then when he gets punched in the face, he runs away. The fighter is the one who gets punched. He gets back up and keeps going. But you, you just look like a bunch of bullies. Like, you just pick on the little kids, and then you get punched in the face, and you go run away crying to a teacher. And and that's what the Angels feel like right now, a bunch of bullies. You get all out of your system. You good now? Yeah. All right, just want to make sure. And I didn't call anyone out. No, we did get. I did. We talked <laughs> we, about not calling anybody out. I, I did. did. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll let it work, though. So, guys, as always, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. You can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim's Nate at Nate Green34, Brock at BDROX8. Please, guys, don't promote bad stuff, whether it's podcast, whether it's an article. Don't go promote it. Just leave it. Whatever. Go talk about it. Leave it. Whatever. Don't promote it, though. Don't go. Don't tell people to go read the articles. So, love being said, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.